Marhaban. In this lesson, we'll discuss latches. I have a latch on the gate to my backyard. You can see it in these pictures. When I want the gate to remain closed, I leave the latch down. But if I want to open the gate, two things must happen. I must lift up the latch and also push on the gate. We'll see in a few slides how this is very similar to a gated latch circuit. Why are those important? Because they are the foundation to sequential circuits. A latch holds a bit value constant. That sounds exactly like memory, which is what a sequential circuit relies on. This is a device symbol for an SR latch, but D latches and JK latches are also possible. Any latch is a simple device for memory. It will hold on to a constant output binary value as long as it is instructed to not change. And of course, power is connected. Latches fall under the category of bistable multivibrators. That fancy name just means that there are two different states, high or low, that can be held constant. In this SR latch, the instructions for behavior come from two inputs, S or set, forces the output to be 1, and R or reset forces the output to be 0. Essentially, there is just one output, even though there are two output ports. Q and Q prime will always be complements of each other. Why two ports then? We'll see in the internal circuit that Q prime must be generated by a gate anyway, so it's convenient to have that available as an output. Here we see more details on an SR latch with active high inputs. The behavior is summarized by this function table. Note that I'm careful to not call this a truth table. A truth table should be used for combinational circuits where the values are just zeros or ones, and I suppose the occasional don't care x. This function table does have zeros and ones, but also something else in this top row. When S and R both equal zero, the latch is in no change mode. This means that the Q output in the next instant is the same as its value in the current instant. This is summarized symbolically by the subscript notation. Q sub T means the output right now. Q sub T plus one means the next output. So reading this first row as a whole tells us that when the latch is in no change mode, the next output equals the current output. The next row shows what happens when R is activated. This indicates reset mode, and so Q equals zero. Conversely, when S is activated, the latch is in set mode, and Q equals one. Notice that I haven't even mentioned this Q prime column. As stated before, latches truly only have one output because Q prime is always just the complement of Q. When you interpret the operation, apply the modes to the main output Q, and then, if you want Q prime, flip the result. What is going on in this bottom row? Those are invalid instructions. The latch cannot simultaneously be set and reset. Q cannot equal both one and zero at the same time. So S and R should never both be active. This function is accomplished through just two NOR gates, as shown here. Notice the feedback loop. Q is both the output and an internal signal that determines the bottom NOR gate's behavior, similar for Q prime and the top NOR gate. Those feedback loops are characteristic of sequential circuits. Let's look at some example values on this schematic. Let's start with Q equals one, and therefore Q prime equals zero and be in no change mode, so S equals zero and R equals zero. To help us work with NOR logic, here's the truth table. Notice that the output is high only when both inputs are low. This bottom NOR gate has inputs of one and zero, therefore its output is zero. That matches the current Q prime value. This top NOR gate has inputs of zero and zero, therefore its output is one. That matches the current Q value. So the outputs hold constant as long as none of the inputs change. Now let's enter set mode. 
The function table shows us that q should then equal 1, which actually is the current state. Let's see if that happens. With s equal to 1, the bottom NOR gate inputs are 1 and 1, so its output is 0. q prime remains at 0. This top NOR gate still has inputs of 0 and 0, so its output doesn't change, and we remain with q equal to 1. Now let's enter reset mode. We expect the outputs to flip. With r equal to 1, this top NOR gate has inputs of 0 and 1. Therefore, q equals 0. As a result, this bottom NOR gate has inputs of 0 and 0. Therefore, q prime equals 1. Looping back, this new q prime value means the top NOR gate now has inputs of 1 and 1. That's no problem. That still leads to an output of q equals 0. And finally, let's go back into no change mode with s equal to 0 and r equal to 0. This causes no difference in the NOR gate outputs and thus no change to q and q prime. I want you to notice something that seems very small at first but actually marks the whole difference between combinational and sequential circuits. The current example shows inputs of 0 and 0, and q equals 0. The starting value showed inputs of 0 and 0, and q equal to 1. In other words, the same inputs lead to different outputs. This is huge! This is why we can't fill out a latch's function table with all 1s and zeros but instead use variables in some rows. It is also why we use the term sequential circuit. The output is a result of the sequence of inputs and not the current inputs themselves. This next slide shows the same circuit, but now with active low inputs. We can see that indicated by the name of the circuit, S prime R prime latch, and also by this device symbol, which has bubbles on those input ports. Notice the changes this causes to the function table. 0, 1 is now the instruction for set, because the 0 is applied to s. In the same vein, the invalid case is input 0, 0, because that activates both set and reset. The change to the internal circuit is a simple one. Just replace the NOR gates with NAND gates. I won't spend much time here, or go through numerical examples, because the core concept is the same as the previous slide. We've just complemented the inputs. But here we will add a new layer. A gated SR latch has an enable switch. While the circuit is enabled with EN equal to 1, it functions just like we saw with the basic SR latch. But when the circuit is disabled with EN equal to 0, the circuit is in no change mode. It doesn't even matter what values are on S or R, thus the X is on the table. This makes the circuit behave like the physical door we started the video with. In order to open the door, two things must happen. First, I must flip up the latch. This is like setting EN equal to 1. Second, I must push the door open. This is like setting S equal to 1. Only with those two actions can a change occur. This enable signal makes the device more useful for memory purposes. We can enable the latch while we store new data. Then we can disable the latch for as long as we want that data stored. In the final slide of this lesson, let's move away from SR latches. Here we see a gated D latch. Note the similarity in the schematic to what we just saw. The only differences are that the S input has been renamed D and the R input has been removed and replaced with D prime. As a result, there are only two possible enabled modes. When D equals 0, the circuit is in reset mode and Q is forced to 0. When D equals 1, the circuit is in set mode and Q is forced to 1. There is not a no change mode or an invalid mode. However, because this is a gated D-latch, we can disable the circuit to cause a no-change mode.
There are places where an SR latch is advantageous over a D latch and vice versa, but we will be using latches primarily as building blocks for flip-flops, which are essentially latches connected to a clock. We'll explore various types of flip-flops and their construction in the next lessons.